Welcome to Common Ground, an inside look at Suffolk County. I'm your host, Sheriff Steve Tompkins. Now, in the first portion of the show, we've got a good friend, not only to the program, but to the city of Chelsea, and that would be city manager Jay Ash. Jay Ash has been there for a long time, and this is a gentleman who is really skilled in government. He really gets it when you talk about civic responsibility and how he can bring his resources and his talents to his city to get the most that they can in the best way that they can to take care of the communities and the families families throughout uh, Chelsea. So without any further ado, sir. Good to see you, sir. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Me. So I'll tell you what, real quick, jump into the functionality of a city manager, say, versus having a mayor. What's the difference? Yeah, it's a huge difference. Uh, you know, I grew up in a political background. I, My first campaign, I was 11 years old. My first congressional campaign I worked on, I was 15 years old. Ed Markey, by the way, was the candidate oh, at I the time. It. So it was uh, candidate Ed Markey, and now it's great to see him as U.S. Senator. Yeah. Um, you know, so I grew up in a political background and, and I really appreciate uh, what it takes to get elected. And there's a, there's a, there's a special amount of work and, and um, credibility that candidates uh, develop and exude. And I really admire that. As a city manager, I have uh, the, many of the same responsibilities the mayor does, but I don't have to go out and campaign. Um, I work as many hours as the mayor does. Mm -hmm. It's just that I get to spend my 60 or 70 hours a week on actually running the show mm -hmm. as opposed to spending 50 hours a week running the show and 10 or 20 hours a week campaigning for the next uh, election seat. The biggest thing, though, I think is the difference is imagine my office. You've been in my office, right, and, right. and thanks for coming to Chelsea City Hall and, right. and sharing uh, with us all our, our hopes of public safety and corrections. So in my office, as you know, I look down the hall to the city council chambers. When there was a mayor in my office, there was a mayor in Chelsea until 1991, okay. that mayor would look down the hall and he'd wonder which one of those nine people were going to be running against uh -huh. him next. <laughs> and while they were all supportive of the agenda, they wanted to see their city do well, they didn't want to see the city do so well right. that the mayor was going to be there for a long period of time. Right. And invariably there would be tension that would grow because of that. In my case, I work for the 11 city councils who are down the end of the so hall. So those are your bosses? Those are my bosses. Okay. Right. Uh, but probably a better way to describe them is that those are my partners. I look down the hall and I see 11 partners. Mm -hmm. None of those 11 by our city charter can be city manager uh, without taking a year's leave. Um, so practically speaking, okay. none of them uh, can aspire to be me, That's and good. I don't have to worry about them trying to thwart my agenda. That's good. So, uh, the special relationship that has developed has allowed us to focus all our energy on positive stuff. And, you know, I say to my friends who are mayors, it's just, I have a newfound respect, even though I've been in politics all my life. Mm -hmm. I have new found respect for uh, mayors that, that do it well because you have to contend with that extra element, that extra pressure on the job. So let me ask you, you said Chelsea had a mayor up until 1991. What happened in 1991? Why did it change? So uh, Chelsea in 1991 suffered uh, a, the ultimate uh, indignation. We went into uh, state order and receivership. Oh, we were the first community since the Great Depression uh, to go into receivership. It was a combination of financial problems and civic problems okay. in the community that thrust the city to the bottom. Um, at the time, I was working for local state rep, and again, I was very involved in politics. It was uh, the worst of times. 1991 was awful. It was terrible to see uh, the name of Chelsea dragged through the newspaper okay. on 60 Minutes, dragged through national press about the, uh, the low wow. that we had hit. Okay. Four years later, we emerged from receivership, and uh, we emerged as a much better, stronger, uh, capable community. And now looking back on it, it was the best thing that ever happened to us. Okay. Um, we changed in four short years things that some communities take generations to change, if they change at all. Okay. Uh, so uh, put in place where uh, new systems, new programs, new initiatives, um, a new spirit of working together and, and out, uh, taken out was the, the political problems and the cronyism and frankly oh, some corruption that existed that um, uh, thwarted uh, the efforts and, and robbed the taxpayers of, of, uh, of honest service. So on that note, talk to me about the intersection of government and community to, to get yourselves out of that hole after four years, as it were. Is it, was it a community slash government effort, or was it principally a government effort that helped you rise up out of that? Yeah, the, the community is an important part of what you do. I mean, you preach this yourself. I've seen you uh, talk about this. So um, the role of the community in governing is more than just showing up on November 7th and voting, um, although I hope many of them do show up and vote on November 7th. But um, the, 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 the important thing about uh, community 
is that everybody has to own a piece of mm -hmm. the governing responsibility. And what happened in the bad old days prior to receivership was that you had a, a, a network, the good old boys network, uh, that was very insular, uh, very small, and uh, wasn't paying attention to the needs of the community. And so little by little things were falling apart until one day, um, you know, the state shows up and says this place is a total mess. And yes, you are financially bankrupt, but you are probably civically bankrupt mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, so community um, stakeholders were leaders in the community that really uh, made sure we didn't fall back any further and press for changes. And today, the roster of community leadership that we have is as good as anywhere strong, else, I would yeah. say, in the country. You yeah. know yourself, yeah, you've, you've met with a number of them, and uh -huh. uh, they're real partners in governing. I've learned a lot from them, and uh, we share a common vision for our community going forward. Now, how did you become city manager? How did you get the job? Well, first of all, when did you enter that office? So I've saying? been uh, the city manager since 2000. Okay. Uh, so I'm coming up on my 14th anniversary. Okay, and how did that, uh, how did you come? Uh, so I was uh, involved in politics. Right. I worked for the local state rep, Richie Voke, who mm -hmm. was the House Majority Leader. Uh, I was his good staff guy. director. Yeah, yeah you yeah, remember yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Richie Voke had run for Speaker of the House against Tommy Fennerin. Okay. Uh, the two were allies at one point, but, you know, uh, circumstance thrust them um, to be opponents to each other. And uh, our, our team uh, did not win, and so I left the State House. And as I was leaving the State House, there was a position opened up at Chelsea City Hall as the community development director in charge of planning and economic development. Okay. I was friendly with the uh, then first city manager, uh, Guy Sanigate, who was the first city manager at Chelsea, and he asked me to come on board. I spent four years in that position, and then when Guy moved on, um, I uh, was an applicant for the job. Now, we talk about politics versus being an applicant for right. the job. Mm -hmm. During the time of trying to become city manager, I felt like I was a politician. I felt like I needed to get votes because what happens is it's the city council that selects you. A supermajority has to select you. Oh, okay. So of the 11 city councils, I needed to have seven votes. Mm -hmm. Well, on the first ballot, I had six. Mm. On the second ballot, I had six. Oof. On the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth. I had six, and all this time I'm thinking to myself, do I need to like hold signs somewhere? Right, do I right, have to right. hold <laughs> fundraisers or something? <laughs> Finally, on the thirteenth ballot, uh, one of the five who had been voting against me uh, saw the light, let's say, and came over um, uh, number seven. And uh, from that day forward, I've enjoyed almost uh, near unanimous support uh, from the city council, and it's been a good run. So talk to us about the initiatives of Chelsea now. Talk to us, like, we're seeing all that's happening, at least I have, because I've spent a, lot, a fair amount of time in Chelsea, and there's a vibrancy. You know, no, there's thanks. an energy that's going on in Chelsea, and there's also, dare I say, a bit of a development boom. Yeah. You know, I've seen some good things coming up. Talk to us about Chelsea now and where it's at and where you think it's going to be three, five years down the road. Yeah, uh, thanks, thanks for those kind words. Um, there's a consistency of approach that is really making a difference. Now, you lead a shop, and you know that um, if you have an approach and you're moving forward and then somebody else comes in and decides that they're going to change the approach, you have to tear everything down and that's rebuild right. it again. That's right. that's right. um, so that's another reason to keep the uh, same guys in office for long periods of time. Thank you. Um, in my case, I've had 13 years of being city manager, but I've really had 17 years of experience in city government now on a... Um, almost on a single agenda, or a single uh, pro-Chelsea agenda. So um, things are really good. 2013 was probably our best year. Uh, we had two bond rating increases. Mm. Most communities would celebrate one. We That's had two. Right. That is awesome. Yeah, we had yeah, two. Right. Uh, we had uh, record economic development taking place. We had uh, new hotels yeah. uh, breaking ground and residential developments breaking ground. Uh, we had an announcement by the governor, which is really exciting, that the Silver Line is going to be coming to Chelsea. Um, that opens awesome. up a world of opportunities. That is great. So when, is that, great. when is that going to come through? In, uh, a year it, or two? Um, in 14, they will start construction, okay. and it'll take two years to build. So, okay. sometime in 2016, uh, uh, frame this if, uh, for you if I could. Um, this uh, won't be of interest maybe to your residents uh, who are watching from Boston, but from everywhere else. Think about this. At the Mystic Mall in Chelsea, where we have a great market basket, mm -hmm. the, probably the best supermarket on the East Coast, it's the largest supermarket on the East Coast, and, and uh, any day, um, at any time, it looks like a sad <laughs> day before Christmas. It's just crazy. 42 cash registers going all the time with wow. business. So at that market basket in 2016, the commuter rail, which is a nonstop from Chelsea to North Station, and the Silver Line, which is direct service to South Station, will both take place at the Mystic Mall site. It'll be the only oh. site outside 
of Boston, where you'll be able to get direct service to both North and South nice, Station. Nice, so nice. when we talk about economic development, we sell Chelsea's proximity to Boston, and that's great. So that's been good. Uh, crime stuff, some, something right up your alley yeah. has, been, uh, has yeah. been really good. We had, uh, we had a 25% reduction in crime in 2013 okay. that preceded, uh, was preceded by an 8% reduction in 2012. So over the last two years, we've cut crime by a third. So talk to me, what, what's, what's bringing that about? Now, I know that your police chief down there, Brian Case, is a great, yeah. great leader, but what's bringing that reduction down? What's yeah, Brian, Brian's great, and it starts, uh, I really think it starts at the top. Uh -huh. uh, Brian's been able to inspire a group of men and women who are already committed, but he's been able to organize them and get the very best out of them, and yeah. they're doing terrific work. So, you know, our police department does a great job. Unfortunately, as you know, um, the challenges out on the street are so much. It's just not like, you know, let's have a good team and go out and we'll, we'll beat the bad guys. Um, there's a lot of things that go into it. So, Brian, one of the things that uh, Brian has done is he's, um, he's created this street robbery task force, which, which is really interesting. We, we've had a conversation about this before. Mm -hmm. We've taken five police officers off the street, put them in plain clothes, and sent them out uh, at night. I'm going to say... Five, I think it's five to five a.m. I'm sorry, five p.m. to um, uh, two a.m. But uh -huh. I may have my uh, I was off a little bit. Um, and what these officers do is they drive around in plain clothes, uh, un unmarked car, and they're looking for the signs of where trouble may take yeah. place. Yeah. And they get out of the car and they approach uh, typically young men, but it could be anyone in the community, and engage in a conversation and um, take some notes and ask, you know, do you mind if we take your picture? You know, so we've got notes on who's hanging out with whom. We've got pictures of people. And now you're a, ba you know, you're a would-be bad guy. Are you going to do something bad that exactly. night? Exactly. No, you know, police know you're right. in town, right? right. So right. haven't violated anyone's rights. We're right. not frisking. Right. We're not doing anything right. else. We're asking right. permission. We're just engaging in conversation. But you're being proactive. It's being proactive. So yeah. that's been a big part. So on the policing side, I'm really proud of that. The other thing that uh, you've been involved with that um, I'm very excited about is our Safe and Successful Youth Initiative. So uh, Governor uh, Patrick has uh, put together this program that's supported by the legislature. And the basis of this is that we are taking uh, proven risk men, mm -hmm. 17 to 24, mm -hmm who have a history of violence, and we're directing programming to them. So in the old days, it was all about prevention. You'd spread a bunch of money around to right. a bunch of different That's programs, right. and you'd hope to find the one kid who someday was going to be the problem. Now what we're doing is we're saying, hey, there's 50, there's 60, there's 100 players in a community. If we can get them yeah. on the straight and narrow, yeah. then we can reduce crime elsewhere. Now, you had a great program down there with, uh, with uh, Molly Baldwin yes. down at Broca, where they're looking at evidence based data. Yeah. So when you talk about just kind of throwing money into the wind and seeing what sticks, now they're refining it. You guys are refining it. And, and Roka is actually trying to cross over into Boston. I believe they're going to come That's to right. Boston sometime yeah. soon. I know she's out in Springfield. But that, that, that evidence based data is saying this is what works and this is what does yeah. not. And so don't go there because you're going to lose money. Yeah. I think that's an extraordinary model that she's uh, got yeah. employed down there. And a lot of that has started with you guys down in Chelsea. Yeah, uh, we, uh, Roker's a primary partner of ours. Um, yeah. I spend a lot of time at Roker and, and Molly spends a lot of time up at City Hall. The ironic thing is that we helped develop a, a great program. The Safe and Successful Youth Initiative with Roker um, has led to us identifying um, kids that are, or young men who have had problems in their lives and yeah. have been involved in violence. And we're targeting uh, mental health, behavioral, employment, education programs yeah. at them. And the police are talking to them as well. The program has gone so well that the state of Massachusetts has selected ROCA for its first ever pay for success program. Mm -hmm. So ROCA is actually going to be paid to keep young men out of jail. Right. Uh, we're going to try to put you out of business. That's, that's, that's fine by me. <laughs> but the, the beauty of that is they only get paid if it works. Only if it works. The irony for me is that the state has said, but you can't do it in Chelsea. And the reason for that is because Roka's already been operating in Chelsea. I didn't know that. And Roka's already successful I in Chelsea. Okay. So it would be unfair to then say, all right, Roka, we're going to give you money now for doing what you've been doing for 25 years. I didn't so know that. Okay. Every, other com every other community in the Commonwealth, yeah. except Chelsea, is going to benefit from this Pay for Success uh, program. Okay. We're happy to uh, share our, uh, yeah, our, so uh, <laughs> our wealth with, <laughs> with everybody else in the community. So that's what happens when you're successful. Yeah, that's what happens when you're successful. Wow, that's yeah. crazy. Now, how about jobs, like summer jobs for youth and, and education for youth? How are you guys coalescing around the 17 to 24 year old demographic to make sure that they get, first of all, education, yeah. which is almost a straight, in the absence of, is almost a straight shot to right, us, right. you know, without so true, education. Right. Um, what are you guys doing? Do you have any extra funding or initiatives around education? Yeah, you know, the, the education piece is huge. And, Absolutely. And, um, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you an anecdote. Um, so one of the hotels that was open, we were able to get them to uh, hold a job fair. That's a requirement of all our economic development partners. Mm -hmm. We've got um, we've got 
two hotels open, two under construction, and another one planning to go under construction. So we're doing right quite well. You had a third hotel? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, we have two hotels under construction now, a Town Place Suites and a Holiday Inn, and that'll be numbers uh, three and four right, during right, my Right, because you already have two down there, right? We already yeah, have a Marriott okay. and a Wyndham. Right. And we have a fifth hotel now that has just um, put a piece of property under, under agreement. So. So, you know, each of these uh, hotels, I have partnerships with the developers, and I say, hey, one of the costs of coming to Chelsea is sure. you got to hold a job fair and you got to hire people. And, and to, to a person, they all say the same thing. Hey, we'd love to hire locally and, right. and uh, help us to do that. So the anecdote I want to tell you is that um, we have a job fair for 40 jobs. There are 400 people that show up. So, Sheriff, right away I'm saying to myself, boy, you know, I feel good that 40 people are going to walk out of here with a job, but 90% of the people here aren't yeah. going to have a job. Yeah. Yeah. So I sat down and I talked to a few of the people while they were waiting and was started helping them to fill out their applications, their job applications. Okay. And these are young men, 23, 25, 27, you know, some uh, women the same ages, with gaps in their employment yeah. history yeah. that are wide enough to drive a truck through. And I left there saying to myself, as good as things are in Chelsea right now, physically, you know, there's development happening everywhere, the civil line's coming, we've got hotels, the FBI is building the regional headquarters. Financially, we've got bond rating increases and we've got surpluses and we're paying for programs and all kinds of other things. In our school system, great education, we, we were the um, uh, small district school of the year for uh, AP uh, in 2013. Nice, nice. Our, our two graduates, our top two graduates from Chelsea High School last year went off to Yale and Harvard. Nice. Stacked that up against any suburban That's right. community, there right? You go. So That's as right. good as all that stuff is, right. there's this poverty piece that's nagging in employment, uh, education and employment are tied to that. So we're really working, um, we're trying to work as a, as a community uh, to deal with these issues and uh, there's some promise, there's some promise there. Yeah. Do you have a large immigration, uh, a large immigrant population yes. down there? Yes, yes. Mostly what, is it Latino? What's yeah, yeah, biggest? it's 60% uh, Latino, Chelsea 60% Latino, but another way to look at it is wherever there's a war uh -huh. in this world, six months later, you see refugees in yeah. Chelsea. And so the Chelsea story is one of success. Um, we've, we've been very successful in getting people assimilated into the ways of our society. What happens through that assimilation is that people go off. Chelsea is in a place where people have put down roots. Oh, I see. It's the way station. It's the entry point okay. for people who come from around the world. Okay. They get an education. They get themselves a job. Maybe it's their kids that do better, and then they go off, and they spread the good news about Chelsea everywhere. Okay. And what happens is backfilling them is the next wave of the impoverished. So um, we, we're aware of that, and we're trying to um, encourage some people to place more roots in the community. How do you do that? How, 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 you know, I'm, I'm interested yeah. in that. It's, uh, it's about quality of life. I mean, we have to improve the quality of life in our neighborhood. Okay. So we built more parks, for example. We built more parks Green in the space. state uh -huh. um, than anyone else with the exception of Worcester. We've built 10 new parks in the last 15 years. Okay. Um, we have just created this new housing task force um, that goes around and inspects every residential unit once every five years to make sure that it's up to code, nice. Nice. you know, to elevate the quality of housing and also to protect the people that are living in there. We're working on social capital right now. People don't know their neighbors. You remember growing up, right? I, Yes, yeah. I do. Do you remember? I mean, it was a long time ago, yeah, but do you remember yeah. growing up, right? I, I remember growing up. <laughs> <Look at laughs> yeah, this, yeah, exactly. Right. Um, right. You know, everyone knew everybody else, right? Yeah. And you couldn't get away with anyone. Why? That's right. Because, because they knew. And they, they knew. knew you. So you get in trouble. Yeah. You know, you get you get a tongue lashing from your neighbor. Right. She tell your mom. Yeah. And you get a second. Exactly. That doesn't happen. It doesn't happen it doesn't today. Happen. So that's called social. Yeah. It's, a, yeah. it's a component part of social capital. People don't know their neighbors. That's right. No matter how long they live in the neighborhood, right. they tend to be insular instead of outside, yeah. right? So we're trying to develop social capital, and studies have indicated that not only does it make a difference in terms of, you know, those helping to bring up the kids and making sure that everybody um, does the right thing, but um, social networking is a way that people hear about jobs. It's a way that they become familiar with education. It's a way that they learn about, you know, favorable bank accounts, or um, there's opportunities over here, or there's programs over there to help them. So. A major effort that we're waging is to tr just get people to become friendly with each other. Yeah. And the question yeah. is going to be, do people stay in a neighborhood longer and get to know each other? Or do they get to know each other and decide to stay in a neighborhood longer? Mm. And that's one of the things mm. that we're testing. The Boston Fed is working with us nice. on this very concept. And we're very excited about uh, the early results. So let me ask you about um, cooperatively working with your neighbors uh, outside of Chelsea, yeah, i.e. Sure. either in the county or in the region, economically, um, in a public safety sense, yeah. uh, in an education sense. Do do you guys down in Chelsea, you folks down in Chelsea, yeah. work cooperatively with your neighbors? And tell me how that works yeah, out. Yeah, you know, I've been in the business now for 32 years. Okay. Is that right? Yeah, about yeah. 32 years. Right. Wow. And you don't look a day over 25. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. Exactly. I was a child prodigy. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, um, and um, back 30 years ago when I started, yep. the idea of people working across lines 
was absolutely ridiculous. It would never happen. Yeah. Um, today, um, uh, it's, a, it's, it's expected. It's expected by uh, the officials that are in office and ex expected by the taxpayers and residents who want better services. The person that I'll credit the most with this, um, and I can do this now because he's left office, I'm not trying to you know, kiss up to him or anything, is Mayor Menino. Mayor Menino um, mm. said to all of us, I'm going to work with you in the region, and together we're going to elevate all the boats nice. during the high tide. Yeah. And so uh, Mayor Menino helped to show us uh, the way, and uh, we've been working together with Boston, Revere, Winthrop, Somerville, Cambridge, uh, Medford, Malden, um, and others, and have uh, developed a great relationship with uh, partnerships around all those issues and more that you've talked about. So you're pooling resources, are you pooling money, or is it just basically best practices that yeah, you guys it's, are working it's, on? It's all those and more. Let me tell okay. you my favorite one, my most recent favorite one. We have something called a five-district partnership. Okay. Now I'm going to test myself. Chelsea, mm -hmm. Revere, Winthrop, Everett, and Malden are sharing a common curriculum in the school system with this idea. Our population is so transient now okay. that it's not unusual for Johnny to go to school in fourth grade in Chelsea yep. and then move and take fourth grade in Malden and then yep. go to Everett in fifth grade. And if you don't have a common curriculum, the, yeah. educational that he, the education he's getting is, is going like that. So what these five visionary superintendents have done is said, you know what, we're going to educate Johnny the same way no matter what system he's in. That's and it's, um, uh, our superintendent did her, uh, her doctoral work on this and has identified that that is as significant a impediment to education as is language in the household. Okay. Um, so by uh, revol resolving that, that's uh, we're working as a region to, to raise kids. You know, I mean, when you talk about education, that is one of those areas where people like to keep that close to the vest. Yeah. And so the fact that you're, you know, kind of stretching your tentacles out right. amongst those five partners, I think it's innovative. I think it's creative, yeah, it and, and and good luck with that. I, I trust yeah, that that yeah, will we're very bear excited some about it. fruit. Yeah, we've been fortunate to have partnerships, uh, partnerships with our municipalities, partnerships with all the level of government. Yep, uh, the yep. work that we've done with the sheriff's office has been great, and I thank you for that. Um, the state has been a terrific partner. Governor Patrick, I'm sorry to see him leaving. Yeah, you yeah. know, he's just done a terrific job. Um, he's he's really been a partner in municipalities, and he's been at Chelsea so often that some people have been thinking about that he may want to be <laughs> city manager <laughs> after he leaves the governor's <laughs> office. So, uh, that, so yeah. Deval, if you want to, go yeah, right ahead. You know, know yeah. uh, but. But um, he's, been, uh, he's been terrific. And, and um, the work, even on the federal government, when I started again 30 years ago, um, there was a three-letter acronym that was da had danger written all over it. It was called the EPA. Uh -huh. And nobody wanted to be near yeah. the EPA because yeah. if the EPA showed up, yeah. it was bad news. Right. Well, you know, fast forward 30 years now, the EPA is working with us to clean a brownfield in the community that's okay. full of contamination okay. upon which the Holiday Inn is being built. 30 years ago, that land would have been fallow, it would have been fenced off, it yeah. would have been overgrown with weeds, yeah. and people would have said, oh, do I have to look at that? Yeah. And instead, the EPA, through their leadership, local leadership and federal leadership, has stepped up and said, we're going to help you clean and put that uh, property into productive use, bringing jobs and tax revenues to your city. Now, that is really interesting, because you would think they would leave that to the private yes. entity that would want to get, like, Holiday right. Inn, right. you know, so for that kind of uh, PPP, that... Uh, Public-private yeah, partnership. partnership yeah. I think that's awesome. We've only got a, about a minute or so left. Talk to us about the loss of State Rep. Uh, Gino Flaherty to uh, the new mayor's administration. Yeah, yeah. He was a great guy and he did a lot of good things. Yeah, Gene's guys. been a great partner. Um, yeah. You know, it's uh, great to see. Uh, just as Roca cut its teeth in Chelsea and has gone off and has got the largest pay-for-success program in the entire country, uh, we're happy to see that uh, Gene did such a great job in Chelsea that uh, Mayor Walsh tapped him uh, to help him out in Boston. Gene uh, was a terrific champion, as was Kathy and Ryan Stein, as you know. Uh, right. That's, that's right, right. So we had, that's uh, right. We have, that's a, right. we have a special election um, coming up to uh, fill those two seats. Uh, the both of them are quite a team. Um, Gene was uh, very active in, in everything we did, and he was really a go-to guy that uh, yeah. we called on a regular basis. And uh, Kathy Ann um, just was terrific. And, and it's, it was great to have two members of leadership, but, yeah. you know, it's, it's difficult. Having come from the State House, I know how important it is to have members of leadership in the room right, talking right, about right, things. So it'll right. be difficult, but uh, you know, there are good things happening, and we have champions like you and others that will help us out along thank the way. You. Well, listen, it was a pleasure for you to you know, come today. I really appreciate yeah, you. it. You know, come on up and talk to us about what's going on there. Clearly, the reason that we do this show is because we want folks to know, you know, not just in a public safety vein, but right. just in a civic minded vein that we want to work cooperatively and be seen as an intimate community partner with all the municipalities throughout Suffolk County. So I really do thank you yeah, for coming Yeah, and up you, are, you are that partner. I appreciate everything you do for us. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right, folks, so we're going to go to a break. Uh, we'll be back in a few moments. So if you got to go and get that soda pop, get it now. But come back in two minutes and we've got much more. Please do stay tuned.